In the past, there have been many philosophers who believed that their theories provided insights into the relationship between mind and body. Physicalism is the only position in the mind-body debate that takes science and the mind seriously. There are different versions of physicalism. The first version of physicalism is the identity theory. It argues that mental states are identical to certain brain states. There is a problem with the identity theory, and that is the problem of multiple realizability of mental states. In general, multiple realizability means that you can make something in more than one way and from different things. A clock, for example, can be realized in multiple ways. You can have a Frisian tail clock that is made of wood and copper and which contains a mechanism with a pendulum. But you can also have a stone sundial. This is a clock as well, but it is made of completely different stuff and works without a pendulum. Nonetheless, both objects have the same function. They indicate the time. And that is what a clock does. Mental states also seem to be multiply realizable. For example, when people are in pain, the neocortex is active. If mental states are identical to certain brain states, as the identity theorists claim, then pain is identical to a brain state that incorporates that specific activity of the neocortex. But that would imply that animals, such as fish, which do not have a neocortex, cannot be in pain. Many people infer from the behavior of fish, for example their behavior when they have a hook through their lip, that they indeed are in pain, just as we would deduce from the behavior of people if they were in a similar situation that they are in pain. If fish can have pain, and fish do not have a neocortex, then pain cannot be identified with brain activity in the part of the brain where the neocortex is located. For this reason, we must look for another physicalist theory that accepts the possible multiple realizability of mental states. Functionalism is such a theory. Functionalism believes that a mental state is a state characterized by what it does given certain input. For example, if we step on a nail, we are in pain. That mental state, pain, is caused by the tissue damage from stepping on a nail. This mental state causes a certain output, such as saying, ouch, and removing the nail from your foot. Pain also causes other mental states, such as the desire to get rid of that pain. Pain is therefore a state that does something. In other words, it has a function. That is why we call this view functionalism. What is striking about this view of the mind is that it is of no importance at all what stuff the being who is in pain is made of or in what way that being is constructed, as long as the mental state with a certain input has the same function. According to proponents of functionalism, such as Hilary Putnam, you can see the mind as a kind of software that runs on the hardware that is the brain. That software naturally needs hardware to run on, but what the hardware is made of does not matter. The software program can also differ as long as it gives the same output when given the same input. So, we are a kind of computer. Putnam says that we are Turing machines. Computers as Alan Turing described them. In addition, input in the form of symbols is processed step by step according to certain rules. So that output is generated in the form of other symbols. It would now be going too far to fully explain this. But a Turing machine is constructed in such a way that it can in principle process all the input that you can imagine. What makes this position in the body-mind debate interesting is that if Putnam is right, then we understand how our mind works. After all, we know how a Turing machine works. And if our minds are Turing machines, then we know how our mind works. However, there are two serious problems with this view. The first problem was formulated and illustrated by John Searle, with the now famous thought experiment, the Chinese room. Imagine, says Cyril, that I don't speak Chinese and sit down somewhere in a room. I get a piece of paper with some Chinese characters through a hatch. I have a book with all kinds of rules that state that if I get certain Chinese characters on a piece of paper, I must write other Chinese characters on another piece of paper and then pass that back through the hatch. For someone who is on the other side of the hatch and who does understand Chinese, it now seems as if Searle has answered a question. But Searle has only looked at symbols that are meaningless to him and are connected to other meaningless symbols. He doesn't understand a thing. The conclusion that Searle draws is that symbol manipulation based on rules does not lead to understanding. Syntax does not lead to semantics. But that is what functionalism believes to be the case. So, functionalism cannot be a good theory about the mind, according to Searle. A second problem for functionalism is that it is a model of the mind that assumes that input is serially processed. 
The processing of information goes step by step. This means that every step in the process must go perfectly because otherwise the output is not the correct output, or there is no output at all. But as a model for the mind, this is biologically not very realistic. If a very small part of us does not function well, or if something breaks down, for example, if a neuron dies, then we do not notice it at all. The functionalist model is biologically not realistic as a model for the mind. If we want a physicalist theory that also accepts multiple realizability, then we must look for a biological, more realistic theory.